as among humans, there are many different hereditary lines. Now, suppose purely by chance, among the distant ancestors of this crab, there came to be one which looked just a little bit like a human face. Long before the battle, fishermen may have been reluctant to eat a crab with a human face. In throwing it back into the sea, they were setting into motion a process of selection. If you're a crab and your carapace is just ordinary, the humans are going to eat you. But if it looks a little bit like a face, they'll throw you back and you'll be able to have lots of nice little baby crabs that all look just like you. As many generations passed of crabs and fisher folk alike, the crabs with patterns that look most like a samurai face preferentially survived. Until eventually, there was produced not just a human face, not just a Japanese face, but the face of a samurai warrior. All this has nothing to do with what the crabs might want. Selection is imposed from the outside. The more you look like a samurai, the better your chances of survival. Eventually, there are a lot of crabs that look like samurai warriors. This process is called artificial selection. In the case of the Hakey crab, it was affected more or less unconsciously by the fishermen, and certainly without any serious contemplation by the crabs. Humans, for thousands of years, have deliberately selected which plants and animals shall live. We're surrounded with farm and domestic animals, fruits, vegetables. Where did they come from? Were they once free-living in their present form in the wild and then induced to adopt some less strenuous life on the farm? No. They are, almost all of them, made by us. The essence of artificial selection for a horse or a cow, a grain of rice or a hakey crab is this. Many characteristics are inherited. They breed true. Humans encourage the reproduction of some varieties and discourage the reproduction of others. The variety selected for eventually becomes abundant. The variety selected against becomes rare, maybe extinct. But if artificial selection makes such changes in only a few thousand years, what must natural selection, working for billions of years, be capable of? The answer is all the beauty and diversity in the biological world. That life evolved over the ages is clear from the changes we've made in the beasts and vegetables, but also from the record in the rocks. The fossil evidence speaks to us unambiguously of creatures that were once present in enormous numbers and that have now vanished utterly. There are far more species that have become extinct than exist today. They're the terminated experiments in evolution. These guys, for example, the trilobites, appeared 600 million years ago. They were around for 300 million years. They're all gone. There's none left. But in those old rocks, there are no fossils of people or cattle. We've evolved only recently. Evolution is a fact, not a theory. It really happened. That the mechanism of evolution is natural selection was the great discovery of Charles Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace. Here's how it works. Nature is prolific. There are many more creatures that are born than can possibly survive. So those varieties, which are by accident, less well adapted, don't survive. Or at least they leave fewer offspring. Now, mutations, sudden changes in heredity, are passed on. They breed true. 
the environment selects those occasional mutations which enhance survival. And the resulting series of slow changes in the nature of living beings is the origin of new species. Well, many people were scandalized by the ideas of evolution and natural selection. Our ancestors looked at the intricacy and beauty of life and saw evidence for a great designer. The simplest organism is a far more complex machine than the finest pocket watch. And yet, pocket watches don't spontaneously self-assemble or evolve in slow stages on their own from, say, uh, grandfather clocks. A watch implies a watchmaker. So, there seemed to be no way in which atoms could spontaneously fall together and create, say, a dandelion. The idea of a designer is an appealing and altogether human explanation of the biological world. But as Darwin and Wallace showed, there's another way. Equally human and far more compelling. Natural selection, which makes the music of life more beautiful as the eons pass.